There are lots of studies of happiness in chocolate. Just Google it. <laughs> it has to do with uh, serotonin and oxytocin. And good quality chocolate certainly just tastes good, which can make you happy. So interestingly, though, vanilla historically has been used from an aromatherapy perspective and even as a food for that. Few people know this, but the original use of vanilla was as an herb hundreds of years ago as an aphrodisiac. This is a really cool thing you can do with vanilla. And this is a low toxin special process vanilla. I take a whole teaspoon of this because vanilla has things in it uh, called uh, actually uh, vanillins or vanilloids. And you have vanilloid receptors in the brain and this can activate them in a way similar to what say a hot pepper would with capsaicin. So you take vanilla, you take xylitol, butter, and upgraded MCT oil, and you blend them together with hot water. And you get like a vanilla something, I don't know, a hot vanilla drink that is really delicious. The vanilla, when you drink it that way, gives you like a really clean mental edge. It's not as ampy as bulletproof coffee with the caffeine effect, but there's definitely clarity that comes from vanilla. and. I definitely feel a happiness difference from that. Coffee has also been shown in lots of studies. Google coffee, happiness. You'll see actual bona fide university research about what coffee does for your emotional state. There's some other supplements you can take too. Things even like vitamin B. <laughs> if you're low on vitamin B, you're not going to be in a good position to be able to be, uh, to make the neurotransmitters transmitters that you need to be happy. <clears throat> Same thing with vitamin C, and vitamin D. Your basic vitamins, many of which we've already talked about today, if you don't have those things, you don't have your zinc and your copper, you're not gonna have basic chemistry running to keep your cells working the way they should work. And honestly, a well-functioning set of meat <laughs> will give you better chances of having well-functioning emotions. If your body is failing, your emotions are going to be off and you're not going to be feeling happy the way you'd like to. Another thing that you wouldn't expect is that houseplants actually are shown in studies to increase happiness. There's a pretty good argument that you should have at least a houseplant and probably several. And NASA even did an experiment. I kind of like space programs because, I mean, who doesn't like astronauts, right? But on top of that, it's such a great biohacking experiment. They can get all the data they want from astronauts. I mean, they have astronaut diapers, for goodness sake. Everything that goes in and comes out of astronauts has to be weighed and measured because they're in space in a can, and you have to know where you're going to put it. So they get data about human performance in conditions that are way outside what any of us are ever likely to experience. But that knowledge feeds right back into some of the things that we've talked about, like the whole body vibration plate that was developed originally to keep bones strong in space. And things like the cerebral electrical stimulation device designed to let you get more efficient sleep in less time so you can spend more time fixing stuff in space. Who would have thought when those things were being made like 30 years ago that they would be filtering down the way they are now? I think it's way cool. NASA actually looked at the effects of houseplants on happiness and I believe in that study it was depression. There's also lots of sources of indoor air pollution. There are species of plants that remove formaldehyde. And in the resource guide that you get when you register, we list all the species of plants that are specifically known to pull formaldehyde out of the air. And benzene, which is a different set of species. And even trichloroethylene. But that is enough about plants. While we're finishing the setup for Get Some Ice Cream, I'm going to tell you what Get Some Ice Cream is and how it came to be. Get Some Ice Cream is named that because I created it as a way to get enough of the right kinds of healthy fat into my lovely wife, Dr. Lana. At home, she doesn't make me call her Dr. Lana. <laughs> but when we decided to have kids, she had polycystic ovary syndrome, and she was infertile. She was 35. And we wanted to have kids. 
So I started some of the research. I'd already done a lot of anti-aging work and some of my own weight loss work, but I started looking a lot at hormones and what you could do to turn hormones back on and the effect of small doses of toxins on hormonal regulation. And realized I needed a way to get lots and lots of healthy fat designed for hormone creation into a human being and it had to taste good. So over the course of about two years, I perfected this recipe. And you're going to see all the ingredients in a minute here. But what it involves is egg yolks, a whole lot of egg yolks, from the biggest, baddest, heaviest eggs you can get from the healthiest chickens out there. You want yolks that are so orange they hurt your eyes when you look at them if you can get them, not omega-3 eggs. And you use the yolks, not the whites. You might use a couple of whites, but this is about getting the fat and specifically the phosphatidylcholine that's in the yolk and all the nutrients, the biotin, all the other things that are inside there. If you imagine what a yolk turns into, a yolk is everything you need to make a baby because that's what it is. It's going to be a baby chicken and it's going to feed on the albumin and incorporate that, the albumin, the egg whites. So, from that perspective, I said, all right, let's add some of those. And what are the other sources of healthy fat that our bodies use to make hormones? But then how do you make it taste good? And how do you make it a normal part of what you do every day? The answer was, if you're not pregnant, Bulletproof coffee certainly helped in the morning. But what do you do at night? Because if you drink a big, hot cup of Bulletproof coffee at night, you're going to be really productive, but you're not going to sleep very well and sleep is important, especially for fertility. The recipe for get some ice cream came about from this. And there's a challenge. Making ice cream is hard when you make it at home. If you want to follow the normal ice cream book recipes, you put a ton of sugar, a ton of milk, maybe some cream, a couple egg yolks, and it works really well because you're basically using some stuff that mixes to be a softer ice cream at first, but then it freezes pretty hard. When you're doing it with the amount of fat that we're talking about, getting the consistency right is a problem. If you go to bulletproofexact.com, you can see the recipe, and we have a new write-up of the recipe in the resource guide that makes it a little bit easier to get the consistency exactly the way you want it to be. One of the tricks for getting the consistency right involves having a seriously good blender. You just don't want to mess around with a bad blender. One of the other problems in teaching you to make this kind of ice cream is that if you put nine egg yolks in, eggs are different sizes. <laughs> so it's hard for me to tell you, use exactly a quarter cup of water because the ratio of water to fat is right. So if you decide to make this recipe at home, what you'll want to do is you'll want to play around with adding a little bit more, a little bit less water. Too much water in an ice cream recipe leads to ice cream that is more like ice milk when it's first made. And if you freeze it overnight, then you end up with ice cream that is really, well, you have to chip it out. It, it's not very good. If you don't put enough water in, you get ice cream that's almost like frozen butter. Like you can get it out, but it isn't that satisfying. So playing with the water amount is right. But you might be wondering by now, why is it called get some ice cream? Go there, Dave. Yes. <laughs> I just wanted to give my little disclaimer again, not disclaimer, but let everybody know out there that we are, sorry to take the um, but um bump, but um, we are going to be talking about bulletproof sex as we get into this segment. And so just want to let everybody know if they do have kids in the room and they are uncomfortable with this topic to please go ahead and join us back after the next break. It, it was called get some ice cream because you want to get some ice cream. What were you thinking? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I misunderstood, Dave. Misunderstood. Well, I thought it was the British who were supposed to have it, smutty minds. <laughs> it, it, here's what happens. An hour after you eat this ice cream, you get a, a signal from the environment. I'll, I'll say the operating system for your meat <laughs> gets a signal from the environment that goes something like this. Hey, you live in a world or it's a season where there is everything necessary to make an uber healthy baby right now. So maybe you should go try and make an uber healthy baby. And you will find yourself mysteriously pulled to the bedroom. And this is not a joke, and it's not a random claim for a recipe. You can make the recipe without using my stuff. Uh, it's just something that I noticed had a very repeatable effect. 
And when I shared it with friends, they all noticed the same thing, so I published the recipe. And if you read the comments on the blog, it actually does that. And it has an effect, it's pretty well understood, eating a lot of egg yolks, particularly in the evening, boosts testosterone in men, and in women, it boosts reproductive hormones like estrogen and progesterone. So what we found was a repeatable effect, and not only that, it's quite delicious. So what you do for this recipe is pretty straightforward. Blender. This is in grams. I have the conversions in the resource guide to, uh, to the normal American measurements. I tend to use grams because I have a kitchen scale and when I'm developing a recipe, I measure everything on my kitchen scale and grams make it much easier to move up and down versus going by third of a cup and thing like, things like that. There's also a conversion on the website, I think. We start out with our sweetener. This is something you can vary. You like it sweeter, add more. You like it less sweet, don't have as much. Add some stevia if it tastes good to you. You can play around with this. You can make it with honey if you really want to. If you're gonna eat it at night, it's not gonna be the end of the world. Have some honey, too much is not a good idea. Here we've got four yolks, depending on the volume of this. You can have even more than this, and there's nothing wrong with tossing a couple extra in if you feel like it. These are just yolks. This is four whole eggs. You can vary the amount of egg white in this recipe. More egg whites make it actually a nicer consistency up to a certain point. The maximum number of whites you would include would be four whites. You could go down to one or two whites, and it also depends on how big are the yolks versus the white and the egg. There's huge variation depending on the species of chicken and time of year, which is why ice cream recipes are so hard to deal with, unless they told you a quarter cup of egg yolks, and who measures egg yolks that way anyway. So each recipe of ice cream, each batch may vary a little bit. I've made hundreds and hundreds of batches in order to turn Lana's fertility back on, and we have a six-year-old and a four-year-old. We had one child at 39, one at 42, with no fertility assistance other than biohacking and that didn't include uh, anything beyond, say, um, hormones. That was our butter. Coconut oil, you'll notice it's liquid. That's because we melted it. You don't have to be quite so religious about melting everything. You can toss it all in here. The only thing that's hard to toss in is if your butter is still in a cube or like a stick of butter. Room temperature mixes pretty well. I'll make it with cold butter, but then I add the butter first and hot water. And the hot water and butter mix together, then you add the rest of the ingredients. So you might have noticed, this thing is like pure fat, right? <laughs> we have eight egg yolks, like about a cup of butter, <laughs> a cup of coconut oil. Like we're not, uh, we're not exactly, um, going crazy here. Let's make it French vanilla, what do you think? So here, we add some of this stuff. You could add a teaspoon of it, just upgraded vanilla. If you look at that, you wanna zoom in on that? This is 100% pure vanilla beans, there's nothing else in here, and they've been uh, cured, so it's a huge amount of vanilla in this, enough to last for a couple months usually and it's all tested for mycotoxins. It also adds a really nice flex to the ice cream, so you get a few little dots in it. Now here's the other trick. Two things you've gotta know if you wanna be hacking your ice cream. You've never hacked your ice cream? I've never hacked my ice cream, Dave. <laughs> this is apple cider vinegar. Who would put vinegar in ice cream? It took me like months to figure out that's what's missing. If you wanna get that little tang that comes with good ice cream, there's a tiny one in there. You need about like 10 drops, maybe 15. A teaspoon, apple cider vinegar ice cream is not a flavor you wanna try, but a little bit is totally necessary to get exactly where you want it to be. That's one secret. The other secret, oh by the way, lime works really well. Like maybe a quarter of a lime can do the same thing as the apple cider vinegar. You just need a dash of that in there. MCT oil, if you want to scoop your ice cream tomorrow, you must use upgraded MCT oil or Brain Octane. It has thermal properties when it's frozen that make any molecular gastronomy kind of chef like me really intrigued. 
it gets a little bit soft and rubbery, but it doesn't get hard like butter does. So this provides the ability to scoop it out. If you have at least one egg white and the MCT oil in here, you will have ice cream that is scoopable tomorrow. Like I could write a whole ice cream cookbook for low carb ice cream. This is like my best stuff. I, I spent like hundreds of hours on these secrets and they're yours. Finally, 100 grams of water, which is I'd say about a cup or something. If you do no water, it's gonna taste good. It'll taste like the nicest, like pudding, maybe almost like a, uh, like a super creamy, like kind of melty fudge sort of thing, but it is not going to freeze well. So we do this. By the way, cover the blender with your hand. If you ever get this on your ceiling, it will never come off. You could see why having a good blender like a Blendtec is pretty important. There are some recipes for making high, highly sugared, not so healthy ice cream that require you to cook the ice cream down into a custard in a pan. Totally not necessary when you do it this way. And you don't want to waste even a drop because it's that good. Now, Especially during pregnancy, Lana was known to not allow me to freeze it. She would run in and like, pour some in a glass, pour some in a glass. It's actually quite drinkable that way. If you're highly concerned about the raw eggs, you wash the raw eggs in warm, soapy water. If you're really concerned, you could add a couple drops of iodine to the water. Almost all of the salmonella is on the outside of the egg and you totally can sterilize it. I eat raw eggs, I've, I've eaten 10,000 of them maybe. Your odds of there being salmonella is about one in 45,000. And the odds of that salmonella making you sick are much smaller than that even. And that's for industrial eggs, not pastured eggs. So historically raw eggs were served at the mall at Orange Julius even. So when I pour this, you sort of see very thick and creamy. That's how it should look. When you put it into an ice cream maker, it's gonna be just right. And we have like a magic super freezer over here, right? Are we going to do the bag method? Do we have a lid? Oh, we could do that. Oh, there it is. Cool. I recommend the $50 kind of Cuisinart ice cream maker that you can buy. It has a metal bowl that freezes. But there's another way to do this. Is this a screw on lid? I didn't test this ahead of time. I think it is. Not anymore. All right. We're going to have our lovely assistant, Vanna, here take care of that. And if you want to do this right now, you can. You can do it in a mason jar. And you take a bag, like a Ziploc gallon sized bag full of ice, put the jar after the ingredients are in the jar, inside the bag with ice, add salt, zip it up. In fact, here, it's ready. It's harder with plastic because the ice doesn't penetrate the plastic very well. Glass works best. And you literally shake it like this. This gives you a workout, you get lymphatic circulation. Oh, but I'm not gonna do this for that long on stage because it takes a while. What I am going to do is I'm gonna ask our audience to help. And I, I'm now a little bit later, are we going to have, uh, uh, it, we'll have some samples for the audience. This is quite a production because I got a little bowls out, but to be really clear, one measuring cup, that's all you need, one blender container and an ice cream maker. And that is exactly the number of dishes you're gonna deal with. Pretty neat. Any question? Can you add chocolate and or some cocoa butter to it? Oh yeah, I'm so glad that you asked that because there's some, some tweaks that I'll tell you how to do. If you haven't had your maximum of two tablespoons of whey protein, 
if you put upgraded whey, which has a very light neutral flavor compared to most whey's, which are t taste like socks, honestly. Um, if you put this in, the scooping consistency when it's frozen is perfect, like Ben and Jerry's perfect. So a little bit of protein in there goes a long way. Whey protein works better than egg whites for making it scoopable, but it's an extra ingredient. If you want like, white chocolate, you, you must melt this before you blend it in, but you take the upgraded cocoa butter, or cacao butter if you want to be fancy about it. You melt it, a couple tablespoons, even up to a quarter cup. After the ice cream is blended, you dump it in and blend it again. And the, the mouth feel at the end, it's like eating a kind of a nice chocolate bar. And if you want to go all out, add some of the chocolate powder. In fact, I could add some chocolate powder to that. What do you think? We're not going to freeze it though, but we can freeze it. All right, I'll show you what it looks like when you do that. Very quickly, you mentioned salt in the bag there. Should it be rock salt, common salt, sea salt? Does Any salt would work, Any even salt. water softener salt, but I would use cheap salt because you're not going to drink the water when you're done. So if you put Himalayan pink salt in there, you're probably a bad person. Sounds good. And then another question, um, once you do blend, is there a particular setting that you're blending it on? You want to get this as emulsified as humanly possible, as fast as your blender will go, not long enough to heat it up. A blend tech or a Vitamix both are strong enough if you leave them blending for two or three minutes, <laughs> you will, uh, you'll actually heat it up. You can make soup that way. It kind of wears the blender right. out. So don't heat the ice cream, but enough that it's super, super blended. And also make sure that your bag of ice doesn't leak. <laughs> and, and when we're putting it in the bag of ice, um, some folks were asking, because we wanted to have it be done quickly, could you just put it in the freezer? If you just put it in the freezer without agitation, it'll form crystals if there's any water in it. So your best bet if you want to go that route and you don't have an ice cream maker. An ice cream maker is easy. It has a, a metal bowl that you freeze and you dump the ice cream in that, put it in a little machine that turns it, and 20 minutes later you have ice cream. But if you don't want to go that path, there are things you can do, like you make a custard out of it. Put less water in, put it in the freezer, it'll set, and you can even use a little bit of the upgraded collagen which acts as a gelatin if you do it that way. And then you can have like a, a spoonable pudding consistency, which is pretty nice, but you're not gonna get ice cream unless you agitate it. I have never been able to do that. If you want a milkshake though, we can pull that off. You take what's in here, you add ice, and magically it turns into a milkshake. So instead of adding the water, you add the ice, and in a rush, that'll do. By the way, more than a few times, my kids have had to get some ice cream for breakfast because it's a great source of fat with a little bit of protein in it. There's no reason your kids couldn't have this for breakfast. There's no reason you couldn't have it for breakfast. I've certainly done that. We did. So I've incorporated the chocolate in and I'll put, just pour this into a bowl so you can see what it looks like. You can have it every night, but I don't recommend you eat eggs every single night. Take one night out of five or six nights off so you don't develop a sensitivity to eggs. You don't want to do that. We addressed the um, salmonella issue, but Chewbacca, who's been with us uh, yesterday as well, just Get saying back. if you can't eat egg, are there any supplements to use that mimic the impact of egg on hormones? Man, if you solve that problem, you let me know. But, <laughs> um, look at how that comes out. It's, <laughs> It's edible right now, right? <laughs> so this would be a, an amazing chocolate ice cream. It, it's almost like just freezing chocolate pudding. I should ask Bill Cosby with his pudding pop thing to come in and talk about that. And is this an ice cream that's good to be eaten after a workout to help with recovery? Well, I think you're going to want a little bit of protein after a workout to help with recovery. If you upped the whey protein, yeah, it would be good for that. If it's just pure fat, unless you're doing like a full heavy-duty keto adaptation, which I don't even recommend, it, it adds additional stress. If you're doing heavy workouts and you need to recover protein and a little bit of carbs, it's not a problem. So if you're going to do it for, as a recovery, I might even consider adding some raw honey in it. So we, you said that this was um, with regard to the PCOS. Um, it, Sean asked, Dave, will this ice cream help fertility in men with low sperm mo motility? It will, I'll put it this way. I've never done a clinical trial of ice cream, mine or anyone else's, and this is a recipe. There's lots of evidence that egg yolks on a high fat diet helps with testosterone production. That's been pretty well written about like since the 50s. Um, sperm motility issues are actually a mitochondrial issue. The person who's asking that question needs to mind their mitochondria. 
go bulletproof for sure and consider supplements that encourage the function of mitochondria throughout the body and the sperm will actually be some of the first parts of the body to notice the difference and to reflect it. Yes, Mark. Oh, oh. I was just okay. going to say, have you tried making in the, uh, the Breville machine? Well, I don't know the Breville machine. What oh, it's is, awesome. What, what is it, an ice cream <laughs> it, maker? It's a standalone ice cream machine. You know, no freezing the bowl, just sounds, put it on top of the countertop. I, I made it twice and it came out really, really good. <laughs> that sounds amazing. I, I would recommend anything that makes ice cream making easier. Um, the other thing you can do that's kind of, uh, kind of very, actually quite biohacker, is you, you get either dry ice or liquid nitrogen. And I've been to liquid nitrogen ice cream parties. I mean, what do you guys do on weekends? <laughs> and what you do there is someone gets uh, from a local you know, laboratory supply store liquid nitrogen, and you put a little bit of it into the ice cream maker, even into the blender, and poof, you can make ice cream very quickly. You can also like freeze your fingers and lose your eyes and things like that. So you should have gloves and safety goggles. But it's a neat party idea if you have someone who knows how to do it. So I've seen bulletproof uh, liquid nitrogen parties thrown to make get some ice cream but my point here is just that you're gonna eat healthy food and if you've got any message here you're not gonna eat healthy food because you're on a diet to lose weight you're gonna eat healthy food because you like to perform well and you like to feel good every single day and my goal is to do that every day for the rest of my life to the best of my extent and if that is your metric that's your goal then you might as well find delicious, creamy, satisfying, good ways so that when you eat, you don't feel deprived. I don't feel deprived. You know, the, the bacon that I have curing at home that's waiting for me when I get back does not leave me feeling deprived. Bulletproof coffee leaves me feeling happy and satisfied every morning and things like that. So this is an example of one of the kind of infinite number of high fat, sweet tasting desserts with chocolate and coconut and vanilla and all the good stuff in them. So you don't have to like give this stuff up. You just need to know how to hack it so that it tastes good. This is not raw vegan cooking. A raw vegan version of this would have had the raw chocolate powder, um, even my raw chocolate powder, but it would have had, let's see, you know, raw coconut oil, but it would have, would have been missing those delicious egg yolks and all the cholesterol that your body needs, the raw cholesterol, all the nutrients that are in those very nutrient-dense foods and it would have been based on soaked cashews, and you would have eaten it, and it would have tasted delicious, but you would have not had the biological impact that you're looking to get. So this is a sustainable for you way to enjoy super quality food that tastes like it should. The one thing that I haven't mastered yet is pizza that is fully on the green zone in the Bulletproof Diet. That is, I've come close, but that is really hard to do. So when I get that one, I'll share it with you. In the meantime, you know, get some ice cream. That's, that's the way to do it. Well, Dave, you've already been nominated by some of our followers for a Nobel Prize for, for coming up with this ice cream. So if you do pizza as well, I don't, I don't know Can what comes. Can I be comes. the Heisenberg of ice cream? I, yeah, I don't know what comes <laughs> after that. Gail, I know you had a question there. Uh, so it, takes a pretty, uh, it freezes pretty quickly. Is, is that part of the properties of it? It or? takes about 20 minutes in the average ice cream maker. It's really a question of how good your ice cream maker is. It's also a question of how cold your ingredients are when you start. So if the water was cold that I put in here, or maybe I put in ice water with chunks of ice, the more you can drop the temperature before you start freezing it, the faster it'll freeze. So as I got good at making ice cream this way, I started using a higher percentage of ice. You want enough water to mix the butter in and to get all the fats emulsified, and everything else can be ice. If you're in a hurry, you can just make sure you add a couple extra ice cubes. It might be a little more watery, but you'll get ice cream faster. And best of all, you could just eat it with a spoon. If it's not frozen, it still tastes good. Is there a way to hack the recipe to where you can still make the girls want to go to the, the bedroom but not be more fertile? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we leave that for the finishing discussion? Uh, I, I think I have an answer for you there. We are actually going to move on from this point. We've had so many great questions about the ice cream. I think it was everybody interested, but I also know we need to get to um, our next topic, which of course is related. Um, as the results, we, perhaps, of the ice cream. It is, but I want to talk for a second about this question. You actually brought up a really interesting point. We talk about epigenetics and the effect of the environment on you. There is, inside, inside of us, very sensitive chemical detectors. And 
you are attracted to people based on their pheromones. And that is, we've shown, correlated to genetic differences. So you'll be physically attracted to someone who's an appropriate mate for you from a biological perspective. You'll be attracted to lots of other things too, but that is a part of attraction. When women are on the birth control pill, it reverses that. So we've only recently discovered this, but when you're attracted to someone on the pill, if you go off the pill to have kids later, you may lose your physical attraction to the person because you've basically hacked the part of your body responsible for determining biological compatibility in a mate. So what I would argue is that you don't necessarily want to reduce fertility in a woman because every way that I know of to reduce fertility also reduces the health of the woman. Now in men, there are some techniques to reduce or eliminate fertility that are much less damaging than they are for women, and even those have some side effects. Uh, but the short answer is you should consider being careful there, but don't, sat it, don't sacrifice long-term health for short-term birth control. And birth control is really important stuff. You want to get it right, but if it leads to more breast cancer later in life or other things like that, if you care about this topic in more detail, my book, The Better Baby Book, co-authored with my wife about the program we use for our own fertility, is... We have a chapter on that and on birth control and on appropriate things for that. It's called The Better Baby Book. You can get it on Amazon. We have information at betterbabybook.com. But it's actually a really good question, probably not the direction you thought it would go. But you should think about that because you want to be attracted to each other for life if you stay together. And I think that's really important to understand that there could be like very low-level hormonal pheromone things happening that you don't know are happening. Now. Conversation about birth control there. As you can see, we've reset the stage, and I do want to give a shout out at this moment to uh, two of the behind the scenes people at Creative Life, both Melissa and Yuko, who are our two stage managers this week. They've had a lot to contend with, and I think we ought to give them a really big thanks for all their hard work. <laughs>